Let's break into our whistle widget of the week. This is something that we use in our business, uh, in our life, something that saves us time, makes us money, helps us have more fun, or maybe even as kind of a secret weapon. And so I know you have one. I have one. Who would you like to go first? Um, you go first. All right. So I teased this earlier in the episode. I talked about GWC, and this is something that we uh, learned from the EOS system. And it's, I think they actually call it, it's part of the people analyzer. And basically saying, does this person, we talked about this earlier in the episode when we said show, hiring a showing assistant, graduating to a buyer's agent, graduating to a lead buyer's agent, graduating them to a listing agent. And we have done this in our team where we've graduated people and then said, does this person, and they're not working out well, right? And we say, does this person GWC it? Do they get it? Do they understand the job? Do they know that this is what's expected of them and they're not matching it, right? Do they get it? Mm -hmm. Do they want the job? You can have a great salesperson, a great buyer's agent they, that is phenomenal. They understand what a, a listing agent does. They kind of hate listings. They love that interaction with, with the, the people throughout the process. Do they want the job? And C is capacity. Do they have the capacity to do this? And we know um, with a, a variety of factors based on skill, based on growth potential, based on knowledge, based on personality type, do they have the capacity to do this? Kyle... Whistle does not have the capacity to be a good transaction coordinator. He's phenomenal at what he does. He would be fired within a week of being a transaction. I he agree. cannot <laughs> read the details, handle it, fault. He can't do it. Not for long. I don't think he'd be fired. I think he'd quit within a day. Um, so do, do your does your people do your people get it, want it, and have capacity? And if not, doesn't mean you should fire them. But is there a different seat on the bus? Is there a different position where they would excel if they're a fit for your company? So that's that's what I recommend if you're having trouble with an employee, with an agent, figure out do they get it, do they want it, do they have the capacity to do it? And if they're missing one, they're not in the right seat. Do they need to be out of your company or can you reassign them to another seat that they get, want, and have capacity for? I love that. And actually, um, it brings up something that I want to talk about uh, for hiring your admin. Never hire an admin that wants to be a salesperson and never hire a salesperson that wants to be an admin. They are two distinctly unique characteristics. Hire an admin that wants to be an admin forever. Hire salespeople that want to be salespeople. We've hired an admin that said, hey, I'll do admin for a year, but then I wanted to jump into sales. And all they cared about was sales. I would say that is true 99% of the time. We have one of our agents, Cody Stam, was he had the right mindset. He said, hey, I'm going to go backwards three steps because I know, and I'll commit to you for two years, and I'll sit and I'll learn and I'll pick up your dry cleaning and I'll go on listing appointments with you and I'll set out your signs and I'll help you host. I'll do all the all the shit work knowing that in two years I want to become an agent. Um, and it, that was agreed upon early on. And it takes a very special person at yep. a very special point in your life to be able to do that and say, I'm going to go from making 60 grand a year to making minimum wage. Um, that's a hard pill to swallow, ego, financially. Um, but then he was able to come in and make 200K his first year. Not a bad deal. So I wouldn't say never, but it's a very bad idea almost always. It's a very bad <laughs> idea almost always. And I've been burned by it many times. Yes. So um, yeah, so time for my widget. So my widget is the easiest thing in the world. So everything we talked about was leverage, hiring people, getting that org chart around you. And the number one place that I've found almost all of the talent I have over the last 15 years, believe it or not, and you may not believe it, is Craigslist. So I have put up more Craigslist ads than pretty much anybody else. And the most talented people that I have hired over the last two decades have come from Craigslist. I've actually hired seven KW team leaders from the same Craigslist ad that I would put up. Um, I've hired $50 million producers, agents, and teams from Craigslist ads. Now I've tried everything from ZipRecruiter to WiseHire, Indeed, everything in between. Craigslist for me has always worked out the best. I don't know why. There are talented people on there. They are looking, and it's not something that you should um, that you should just skip over. I'm I'm flabbergasted. My gut says you said, "Hey, if you didn't say you have your track record, you're like, let's try Craigslist." I'm like, "Nah, <laughs> thanks, but no thanks." Like. Uh shook 10 out of 10 people i tell that to say no way and then i introduce them to people that i <laughs> hired off craigslist and they're like wow i mean it, it goes back to kind of the behavior of your avatar what are they doing where are they searching um 
apparently they're searching Craigslist. I mean, I know I used to search Craig, Craigslist as a photographer looking for photography jobs. I mean, obviously that's where they're going. Yeah, so, there's talented people on there. I, I, I mean... I was on Craigslist before, so I definitely believe it. So anyways, that is our show today. Thank you so much, Meyer. Thanks for having thanks. for having us. Thanks for joining <laughs> and giving massive, massive value. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Wait, wait. Before you leave, I want to share some more tips and tricks that we're using in our business to take it to that next level. Just click right here. And don't forget to subscribe. Click right here.